Welcome to Word of Hope Church uh, Facebook Live prayer meeting. We're glad you chose to join us tonight. We're going to do uh, something a little different tonight. We're going to share some scripture and a, a devotional. Then we will go off of Facebook Live, and then around 6.30 or so, we will uh, have a uh, Facebook chat. And during the time that you're watching this Facebook Live, you can uh, put in the comments either your prayer request, and we will pray over them as a group for those people that join us in that Facebook chat. Uh, or you can uh, put in the comments that you would like to join that Facebook chat, and we will uh, try to get you in there. It's limited on how many people can get in there by Facebook. And that Facebook chat, just like this Facebook Live, is found at my page, Gene Olive. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we do have the, the avenue and possibility of prayer, Lord, that we can talk with you and walk with you, God, that, Lord, we're so grateful that you're willing to share uh, our lives, God, that you want to be close and personal with us, that you're not a God somewhere far off that's not touched, but in fact, the word says that you're touched with the way we feel about things. You're touched with the feelings of our infirmities, God, and you're able to help. And Lord, you showed your desire to be close to us by sending Jesus, your only son, to come into this world and live among us, Lord. And so tonight, Lord, we just thank you that we can pray. Lord, teach us to pray. That's what your disciples ask. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this study tonight. And uh, these words would be life and encouraging to the people that hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I sure am glad you've chosen to join us tonight. And uh, let me also uh, remind you that tomorrow morning, uh, 1030, we'll have Facebook Live Sunday morning service. And uh, we'll be sharing out the word of God about uh, hope, joy, and peace. And uh, we just hope you could join us for that tomorrow morning as well. Uh, I title this... Uh, time together this message tonight is uh, God makes house calls. God makes house calls. When I was a little boy, uh, the doctor came to our house to visit us when you were sick, and that's changed a lot. There's a lot of times we have to go somewhere to get help, or we've got to have a means to get out, and right now that's difficult, but I want to tell you, God does make house calls. He comes where he's welcome. I want to share a few scriptures with you before I actually get into that devotional time. Uh, just want to encourage you with these words. Isaiah 43, verses 2 and 3 says, When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overtake you. And when you walk through the fire, they sh you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. And that's an amazing, bold promise out of the word of God. And I realize that's a promise made to Israel. Abraham's seed, his descendants. But I want to remind you that Galatians tells us in 3.29, Galatians 3.29, that if we be Christ, what's it mean to be Christ? It means if we're born again, if we're walking in fellowship with God, then we are Abraham's seed and we're heirs according to the promise. So every Old Testament promise uh, that applies uh, would apply to us like it did God's people in the Old Testament. And then Hebrews tells us 12 different places that the New Testament cover, covenant that we have through Jesus is better than the Old Testament. So God intends to add to these promises to make them even greater and bigger in our lives. And, and uh, you know, the children of Israel passed uh, through the waters twice and God parted the waters and made a way for them. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to compromise their faith in God and would not bow down and uh, give prayers and homage to the idol that he had made to himself. But they said they were going to serve the Lord and they weren't concerned about what the king was going to do with them. They just wanted to fear God and serve the Lord. And when they were thrown into the fire, the men that threw them in were consumed, but they themselves were preserved. I want to tell you something that God can preserve you in the worst of times. We've been talking a lot about Psalms 91. We're not going to go there tonight, but I want to encourage you to read that Psalm daily and write it and study it and, and mark it up a little bit and, and, and get what it says down in your heart. The Word of God, uh, just saying I believe the Bible is a wonderful thing, 
But if you don't know what it says, it won't benefit you. It's only the parts of the Word of God that you know and understand that really will have an impact in your life. And you can love God with all your heart and not understand His provision for you. So I want to encourage you, become a great student of the Word of God. And in this particular time that's difficult, it's a good time to look at the promises of God to deliver people because He wants to deliver you and I. He wants to keep us safe in a world that's not safe. In Psalms uh, uh, 41.10, it says, I will strengthen you and I will help hold you up, says the Lord, with my right hand of righteousness. And then in Proverbs 3.25 and 26, the Lord says, have no fear of sudden, su sudden destruction or trouble that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from becoming snared. Just a lot of great promises that God's going to take care of us. And I believe those promises. And when we believe the word of God, it makes a difference in our lives. It is his word. Now, uh, we're living in a time of self-quarantine. and We're limited on where we can go, but the promises of God are not limited. And as I said a while ago, God makes house calls. He's not self-quarantine. He's not afraid. He's not concerned with what's going to happen to his people. He has a plan to get us through this. And I encourage you to believe and trust the Lord uh, during this time. Now, Revelation, the third chapter, verse 20. A wonderful verse, I'm sure you know it, and it's we have pictures of it in our homes, and it shows Jesus standing outside knocking on a door, wanting to come in. And this scripture says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. It is a picture of God's desire reaching out to us. Now, literally, uh, that is written to a church in the third chapter of Revelation because their heart had grown lukewarm and he was calling them back. But it's a call to everybody. Jesus is knocking. He's seeking. He came to seek and save that which is lost. God's plan is to save people. And salvation means not only salvation of the sin, but deliverance and help and healing and provision and peace. Salvation includes the whole man. And Jesus is knocking and we want to let him in our lives. It's interesting to me and humbling to me that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit desire to have fellowship and communion with us all day, or every day, throughout the day. Uh, he wants to have close intimacy uh, with just people, everyday people like you and I. God wants to be very close to you and me. And he tugs at our heart. He knocks at our heart. And How do we open that door and how do we keep that door open? Well, we do that through prayer through this constant talking and fellowshipping with the Father. Prayer is fellowship with God. Billy Graham said one time that prayer is simply a two-way conversation between you and God. Prayer is simply a two-way conversation between you and God. Prayer is getting close to God. Prayer is uh, sometimes dismissing the things around us, the distractions, and going aside uh, somewhere alone and talking with God. It can be while we drive. It can be while we work. It can be while we're doing other things. But prayer does to serve our undivided attention. We need to make prayer a big priority. Now, worry and fret and uh, uh, wringing our hands and, and just crying out to God from that position sometimes is not really the same as faith-filled prayer. We want to pray the promises of God. We want to pray from a place of confidence that God is going to hear and answer our prayers. In Psalm 73, 28, David said, It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all of his works. David said it is good to draw near to God. You know, it's up to you and I to draw near. God calls us. He draws us. He knocks at the door. But we have to choose to open up and let him come in. And prayer, communion, and fellowship with God is how we let him in our lives. Psalms 119, 2 says, Blessed are they that keep his word and that seek him with their whole heart. It's important to have a wholehearted love and commitment to God. 
Sometimes I feel that my heart's a little cold and, and then I have to press in more and go to God and, and seek God and, and say, Lord, forgive me. And Lord, I ask you to set that fire in me again. And Paul told Timothy, stir up the gifts that are within us. Sometimes we have to put some effort and discipline uh, into praying. Right now is a wonderful time to pray and seek God. Many are at home and can't work and can't go shopping. You can't get out to the stores. And if we're not careful, we'll become busy with things around the house. But what we really should be doing during this time is developing a closer relationship with God. And you can't do that without prayer. Spending time talking to God, listening to God, reading the word of God with him. Sometimes I read the scriptures to him. It's not that I think that he forgot, but I'm asking him to show me what it means to teach me his ways and help me understand his word. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Now, we live in a world that has varied schedules, but I have found that if I seek God first thing, the first part of my day, the first moments of my day, my day goes better. I would rather pray in the morning and talk to God and ask for his help, his guidance, his provision. I'd rather do that in the morning time than to get down at night time and spend my time praying, asking God to help me with all the things that did not work out today. I think prayer is good preventative medicine for what's ahead of us. Prayer prepares us for the battles and struggles ahead. And we want to walk that away with the Lord and being prayed up and praying ahead of time. In Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, scripture I know you're familiar with, but I love this verse. And sometimes people ask me what my favorite verse or favorite chapter of the Bible is. And that is difficult because everywhere I look, the Bible is filled with just such wonderful, wonderful treasures. And all of the word, even the parts of the word of God that make a demand on me or press me harder or make me consider the changes I need to make in my life, I still appreciate it. Every bit of God's word is treasure and it's precious. Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart, and I will be found of you, says the Lord. You, you notice in that verse, he, he tells us a few things, that he's got great plans for us, and he wants us to have peace and not evil in our lives. He has a hope-filled end for us. There's an expectation that God has for our life that he wants to accomplish. But you and I have to call upon him. He said in calling upon him, we pray to him. And he said he would hearken to us. He would listen to our cries. He would, he would answer our prayers. And then verse 13, he said we have to seek him with our whole heart. Search for him with the whole heart. And then he said, I will be found of you. You know, God doesn't want half-hearted commitment. He doesn't want somebody that's just wanting him on the day of trouble. He's wanting somebody that wants to fully devote their life to him. You know, if you're a believer today, I, I just commend you to get closer to God. If you're unsaved today, I encourage you to turn to God. If you're feel, fearful and consumed with all the things that you're seeing in the news and watching going on in our world around you, uh, go to God. Cry out and ask him to forgive you and come in your heart and save you from your sins and be Lord and master of your life. He wants to do that. But no matter who we are today, I think we can move closer to the Lord. When we seek him with our whole heart, he'll be found in our lives. He'll show up. He's at that door knocking. In John's Gospel, the 15th chapter, uh, I want to share a couple of verses from Jesus. He's getting ready to leave this world, and he's given final instructions for the last few days before he's going to be crucified to his disciples. And he tells them something very important about prayer in John 15 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you what does abiding mean you ever thought about it if you abide in me it means to continue abide is an abiding a continuing in that direction not hit or miss not 
uh, sometimes or when it's convenient, but a constant and abiding in the presence of the Lord. I want to read a quote here. This is from Brother Lawrence, a man that served the Lord, and there's a book called The Practice of the Presence of God. It's an awesome book. But he said this about abiding in the Lord. There is not in the world a kind of life more sweet and delightful than that of a continued conversation with God. Let me read that once again. Brother Lawrence said, There is not in the world a kind of of life more sweet and delightful than that of a continual conversation with God. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Abiding, continuing, staying close to God, always keeping your hand in the hand of the Father. And he said, the words abiding in you, what fills your heart and mind right now? If we're not careful, we watch so much news that we'll be filled with fear and negativity and, and all the things that are going wrong. Uh, the gospel is called good news. Old Testament, New Testament, it's called good news. But most of the news we watch today is not good news. We need to fill our hearts with the word of God. He said, if my word abides in you, if I abide in you and you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask for whatever you desire and it'll be done. Because when the word of God abides in us, we know what his will is. He's already disclosed so many things in the word of God. So we know that he wants to help us and deliver us and be with us in times of flood or trouble or distress and problems. The verses we read up above uh, dealt with that some. Prayer is the way that we develop and maintain a relationship with our, amazingly heavenly, our amazing Heavenly Father. It's the way we develop and maintain a relationship with him. Constant fellowship with Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So very important in your life. Constantly abiding with them. Staying in the word of God. Reading the word of God. Believing the word of God. Speaking the word of God is a part of that. He said if we abide in him and his words abide in us, then we ask what we want and he gives us our desires. Being filled with the word of God means that what comes out of our mouth would be the very words that God speaks in that situation. When Jesus was on the earth and he was in a storm, he spoke the solution. When Jesus saw sick people, he didn't say how bad their condition was, but he healed their bodies. When Jesus dealt with demoniacs, he cast the devil out and set the people free, and, and he didn't talk about all the problems or how horrible it was. He just spoke the desired result. When Jesus abides in us and his word abides within us, then we can ask what we want and he'll help us and take care of us. Right now, you may have needs in your life that you can't meet because of economic situation that's going on or, or health issues and you wonder if God will really heal you. Yes, he'll heal you. He'll meet your needs. God is faithful to his word. In 1 John 5, 14, the scripture says, verse I'm sorry, 1 John 5, 12 through 14. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It is so important that we're a born-again believer, that we're, trusted Christ, we're trusting in Christ alone for our salvation, that we're fully devoted to Him, that we're loving Him first above all else or anything else. That's how we have the Son, total surrender of our lives. He wants to save us. He's not hard to find. He wants to live in and through our lives for his glory, and it benefits us. If we have Jesus today, we have life, but if we don't have Jesus, we don't have life, and these promises are not much benefit in us, for us. Verse 13 says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of, Son, of the Son of God. The word of God was written to those who believe so that they might continue believing. And he gives us eternal life. If you're not a believer today, well, certainly the word of God applies to you. It calls you to him and shows you how to find him and gives stories of what he's done in people's lives. And that is powerful. But you have to come to know Jesus for the word to live and abide within you. 
Verse 14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We can have confidence that he'll do that, the scripture says. And what is God's will? The written word of God is God's will. And I tell you, about anything you're going to encounter in this life is covered in the Word of God. And that's why it's so important that we learn the Word of God, that we learn the mind of Christ uh, about what He teaches, what He wants to give us, what He wants to do in our lives. The Scripture says that believers can have the mind of Christ. And that would mean that we would have sound judgment, godly wisdom, and the fear of the Lord. And we would understand our Heavenly Father in such a way that we could see uh, in the Word of God, the provisions that He's made for us. So it's important uh, that we know what His will is when we pray. Verse 15 says, And if we know that He hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. And so when we have confidence in God, when we're born again, when we've been made an heir, a joint heir with Jesus, we could stand on the Word of God, the promises of God, and we can have confidence that God is going to keep his word and perform those things that he has told us in his word. And so we know the answer is going to come. It might not be this moment, but the answer is going to come. In Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 12, the scripture says that the Lord hastens to perform his word. God wants to perform his word. Amen. When should I pray? just want to answer that question as we... Get ready to close. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the King James Version of the Bible says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, what that means is, is uh, that we pray anytime there's an opportunity. No matter where we are or what we're doing, we can pray. That we use every occasion, every season every possible moment to pray. Thessalonians says, pray without ceasing. A continual attitude of prayer and fellowship with God. Jesus talked about in John, we read, abiding in him, continually staying in his presence and staying in his word. Do your prayers make a difference? Well, James the fifth chapter talks about that. James 5, 15 says, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So certainly a faith-filled Prayer brings health and healing into somebody's life. And a faith-filled prayer opens doors of opportunities. A faith-filled prayer makes everything po possible, Jesus said. And it says the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to another and pray one to another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man brings great results. And so it says here that we get great results when we pray fervently, and effectively, when we pray the word of God, when we're uh, passionate about our prayers, when we believe what we're praying, when, we, when we're trusting and hoping in God. And it says that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much, a righteous person. You know, somebody said, well, uh, am I righteous? If you're born again, you have the righteousness of Christ. And as you serve the Lord, he transforms you. He changes you. The Holy Spirit, the word of God, uh, they wash us, the scripture says. We're made clean by the word of God. And so our lives grow and we're not the person we used to be. Second Chronicles 5 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. We're not the same person. I'm not anything like the person I was 46 years ago. And I've grown a lot in the Lord in just the last couple of years. It's a continual process, but I'm righteous in the Lord because he that was righteous became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus provided that for us. But it's not just a, a thing we say. It must be a reality in our lives. We submit ourselves to God and his word and his Holy Spirit, and he continues that process of cleansing us and transforming us. But the next verse tells us a little bit about Elijah who prayed that great prayer of faith. It says that he was a man with a nature like ours, that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. 
And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain on the earth, and it produced fruit. It says that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Some translations uh, say that he was just an ordinary person. Uh, he had the same struggles and difficulties in life that you and I have. But what he did different than so many of us is he sought God. He pressed into God. He stayed close to God. And you and I can do that. We can be as close to God as we want to be today. We can surrender as much of our life to God as we're willing to today. And when we do that, uh, our prayers become effective and powerful. And it makes a big difference in our lives, our families, and the world around us. Now, we live in troubling times. And right now would be a good time to invest time in praying and reading the Word of God and reading about prayer and learning how to pray. The disciples knew something about prayer, certainly. But when they saw the life of Jesus in Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 1, they said, teach us to pray because his prayer life was incredible. And we want to have a prayer life like that, too. I want to encourage you to face the challenges in faith and prayer using the Word of God and the promises that you find in the Word of God to stand upon to get you through this difficult time. I want to say we are going to make it through this. I don't know how long it's going to be like this. I don't know all of the circumstances that are going to arise, but God is going to take care of his children, and we can depend upon him. And if you don't know him, well, you can know him today. Feel free to get in touch with me through Facebook Live. Just send a comment, and I'd be glad to pray with you, uh, no matter who you are, about the Lord and, and help you with whatever you're facing. And then don't forget, in a few minutes, uh, we're going to have a Facebook chat, and on that, you're able to uh, you send us a comment. In the comments of this live portion, uh, you send a comment, and we will include you into that group up to however many it will accommodate. And you can give us our, your prayer request, and we're going to pray with you uh, live over the telephone. And uh, then you'll need to get off the phone after you do your prayer request so that others can call in and pray as well. Uh, but it will allow quite a few people at one time. And I encourage you to join us for that. Or you can just text in your prayer request to my phone. Uh, and that would be one uh, 270 0945 and uh, we're going to be praying for you if prayer requests come in later when this isn't live and I see them I still will pray for you God bless you hope to see you in a few minutes on the live chat and then tomorrow morning at 10 30 uh, at Facebook live you have a great evening God bless you